Hi, I'd just like to say that Fantastic Flexagons is simply a business card with the wrong email address on it. That's it. Um, new g for g new Flexagon. As many of you know, I'm not a mathematician or a physicist or a professor of any kind. As I told my older sister, I think I'm just an idiot savant when it comes to Flexagons. And she said, you got that half right. <laughs> older sisters. And you'll recognize the walrus in the corner, I'm sure. And here is the net for the rhombus. It's uh, composed of 30, 60, 90 triangles, 36 of them. And I add one, an extra one for easier closing. But that same net, if you color it differently and fold it differently, it will give you these flexagons as well. And if you make that strip twice as long and color it and fold it up differently, you can get these two flexagons. So it's a very interesting net that lends itself to lots of things. And here is the uh, strip all colored for the rhombus. It's the only flexagon strip that I know that uses all the colors that appear in the flexagon on both sides of the strip. You can see the front and the back. And when I first looked at it, I didn't see any pattern. But when you divide the strip in half, you see that the halves mirror each other. I guess that's the word. For instance, if you look at the uh, front strip to the right of the line, there's a blue rhombus with a bunch of flexagon, uh, excuse me, triangles after it. And that same blue rhombus is on the left, left end of the back of the strip and, and vice versa. So I found that fascinating. Our rhombus has eight triangle groups or eight colors. It can flex into partial pinwheels. There aren't hidden triangles that never show up when you are flexing. They never show up in the flat state. It has toggle triangles that work. In other words, the toggle triangle are pairs of triangles that are unattached at one vertex, and they can swing back and forth and create a shape change. And with this flexagon, you can flex through that shape change. And I found two ways to flex so far. And this I find really fascinating. This, Rhombus has a lot of characteristics that in common with the flexagon on the left, which is made of isosceles right triangles. And I presented that at an earlier G for G. Both these flexagons have a regular polygon in the middle and then two pairs of triangles on opposite sides to make the new shape. And here's some of the things that they have in common. They both have eight colors. And the colors are uh, just have an uneven distribution and in the same way. So each of these flexagons has four colors uh, that have eight triangles each, two colors that only have two triangles each, and two colors that have all the triangles they need to fill the polygon. They both make those pinwheel shapes and they flex the same way. They share two flexes and they make very similar patterns. And let me see if I can get the the, uh, the movie going. Somebody help? There we go. OK, so that's the hexagonal flexagon. I'm doing a pinch flex. I'm opening it up. And you're going to see a nice double diamond pattern there. And now I'm going to take my rhombus. I'm going to flex it the same way. I'm going to pinch. You make like a little beak. And then you open it up. And you're going to see this very similar double diamond pattern with this one. It's like these are cousins for some reason. And now I'm going to do a double slide flex. I'm bending back the, the ends of the polygon, pulling out triangles. I'm making bicolored diamonds that have open pockets. And now I'm going to do that with the rhombus. And when you do the double slide from certain faces in the rhombus, you have to give it an extra little push to get to the next face and have it lie flat. And I think that took me a year to figure that out. And here we go, this little push. And there are the open pockets with the rhombus. And there are the open pockets with the hexagon. I found um, over 60 different faces so far. In your exchange bag, you'll uh, find my gift. And it says only 45 faces so far. But there's nothing like a pandemic to give you extra time to do more things. <laughs> so I found over 60. 
Um, there's a, a number of challenges. This is part of the mystery of this flexagon. I can't flex from that partial pinwheel state into another rhombus or pinwheel. If I were to flip it over, that side I could pinch flex. But I can't do the double slide from this one for some reason. And uh, it's, I think because of that, I can't find the Tuckerman Traverse for this flexagon, which is flexing um, so that all the faces are revealed with the least number of flexes. And um, I'm wondering what would happen if you doubled the strip and folded it up. You'd get something very complicated, I'm sure. And I'm wondering if there's a mathematical reason why those two flexagons are similar. And the, the um, object on the left is the ROM bus <laughs> that was created by my younger sister who's here. Thank you, Ella. It has a little rhombus driving it. Uh, come talk to me anytime about flexagons. It's my, spe my favorite subject. And uh, if you're interested in flexagons, join the flexagonloversgroup.io. Do I have any time left? Uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'd like to, I'd like to just uh, uh, credit my younger sister, Ella, who's made uh, hexaflexagon puzzles that are really terrific. And they're in the Martin Gardner flexagon that's in your, in your uh, came with your program. So she's the one who came up with how you can make those puzzles. And I thank her for that. Keep flexing.